The wedding industry in China, which was a statistic I got a few years ago, was $80 billion and it's still growing. The first time I came was around 2004. I feel like I love China. And then we moved here 2014. Was living in Shanghai for about four years. China Love is about the pre-wedding photo industry in China and it follows five different storylines and they all sort of question why these photos are so important. What is love in China? Questioning what, what is the dream, what is the fantasy? Dream. They're more traditional. They're a beautiful couple. We went to their pre-wedding photo. I really don't think they had much intimacy before then, so it was quite awkward. Their wedding was really beautiful. It was in Anhui, and the father was, you know, quite grief-stricken that she was married. So that sort of offered us probably a more real portrait of a lot of people in China that wouldn't be sort of spending heaps of money getting photos in other countries, but that you just got to see that the warmth of family and community. Jenny and David are very fun and they sort of have that intercultural differences. So he's very Australian and she's from Urumuchi. He doesn't really understand the pre-wedding photos and he doesn't really want to do something that's not real. But he comes around to it because he realises it's important to her, like it is to every Chinese person. And they do an underwater photo shoot and he ends up having fun. But um, there is a struggle for him because he feels like it'll be embarrassing. I think that's the resistance for the Australian male, whereas I think Chinese men are more willing to follow what, what is the dream for the woman. But I think it's more than a woman's dream. I think it's important to both men and women and really to their parents and their grandparents. Viona, she's from Hangzhou and she studied in Australia for six years. Her struggle is her family is very traditional Chinese. Why exactly did you leave China? Well, at least my mum's not here. Yeah, mum even said, you know, oh, you've been put on so much weight. She also wants the freedom to be able to do it her way. It's hard to have both of those two things. One generation ago, people weren't allowed to get wedding photos. The charity did a day where they had five couples on the same day that they did these wedding photos. There was a couple of them that, you know, when they knock on the door, and when they open the door, they actually start crying. It is that kind of reconciling of a period that they went to, through together that was very hard. I got on the bus with the assistant editor one morning and she just said to me, I got engaged last night. And she actually asked her partner and she said, honestly, I've always thought I would get married, but I feel like this footage of the older people has pushed me over the edge. Shi Ji Hao, who is considered the king of that, that industry, so he has 350 studios across seven countries. He really came from poverty and he made all his money eight years. He became a billionaire. Having this industry where you can dress up and you can sort of flaunt wealth even when it's not real, you know, it's just a fake backdrop. It's just a fake gold, you know, stairs and throne. And But there's something in it, not just meaningful for the people. There are a couple of couples that explained it as love is, for some people in China or for lots of people in China, it's not just what you want. It's a love for your family and your community and what's right for everyone.